Alright everybody out there, I got a lot of hits on the, on the uh, video for a truck not building air when I went on a road call one time. So I think that that's uh, a common problem. So today I'm going to show you guys what what is the most common problems when your truck decides not to build air pressure anymore. Um, there's a few different reasons. Sometimes it's a simple fix. Sometimes it's not so much. So, this is an older truck. It's got a Series 60 in it. It's a good old truck. It runs great. But, um, it's the only truck I had in the shop that had an air compressor on it at the moment. So, anyways, I just want to show you guys. This is the air compressor here. Um, this is the head on the air compressor. It's liquid cooled. Uh, coolant goes into the head, cools it, cools it down. Uh, sometimes there's a fuel pump on the back, like on this one. Um, but usually they're right about here on the side of the engine. On the new, on the new Detroit's though, they're on the back of the engine. They're back there on the flywheel. They run off the flywheel. It's a real pain in the ass to change one. But anyways, um, so a lot of problems you'll have with these is uh, the newer styles. They run the air intake hose, the suction line. They run it right off from the, uh, the air filter, or the, the uh, air intake, I mean. On the newer style, they run it right off the air intake, which is, is, isn't very good. Uh, I think it's a poor design because on the air intake now, on the newer style trucks, you have EGR exhaust gas recirculation so what it does is it pumps exhaust gas into the air intake system with the exhaust gas comes soot the soot likes to build up on the valves inside of this air compressor and it plugs up the valves on the air compressor a lot of you guys with the with a cummins isx or a cummins n series you'll you'll know what i'm talking about because that there's reed valves in here like on a two-stroke engine basically it's a little piece of metal that that opens and closes that soot likes to build up in that in that so what you can do if it's not building air now don't sue me if you break it but you take a, a hammer or something and you you hit the side of the air compressor right about here you give it a couple taps not very hard just enough to maybe shake some of that shit that that exhaust soot loose that might get it working again. I've had it. I've had good luck with that a few times on a Cummins. So that that's usually one problem that you have with these air compressors, or the valves wear out and they snap right off inside the air compressor. Um, but either way, that's usually a big problem you got there. And then the other problem you'll have with not building air pressure is a lot of times this is the outlet line here. It's metal. It runs down. It runs down for a ways, down alongside the engine, then along the frame. Uh, sometimes they'll rub a hole in something, and you'll have air coming out of there. So, a uh, good way to check for that, you take the air fitting right off the air compressor. And with it running, you could put your thumb right on the end of that. It should blow it right off. If it does, then you know it's building air pressure. And that means you got a leak somewhere down this line. If it doesn't, that means your air compressor is not building any air. Now, another another way, another check to do, or uh, another problem is you might have an, a, f a frozen air system. We get a lot of that up here in upstate New York. The air system will freeze up on you. Well, when that happens, and you you can buy that air dryer stuff, or the, the airline antifreeze, and a lot of guys will buy it but don't know where the hell to put it. Well... Again, you take this line off here, you pour some in that line, you tighten the line back up, and then that will push it through the system. And usually it will push it right up to where it's frozen, and it might freeze it, and it might free it up. You might be in, in good business. Um, another spot you should put that airline antifreeze is right in your glad hands. You take your glad hands off your trailer. You pour a little bit right inside that sucker with the air off obviously you you know you you pull your knobs on your dash pour that shit in there 
hook it back up to your trailer, push your knobs back in, and that'll push that airline antifreeze right through the system. All right, and those are the easy fixes so far. Um, one that's a little more complicated is this governor. Sometimes these governors fail. Sometimes the springs inside fail. Sometimes they just plug up with shit and they don't work anymore. That's what tells your air compressor to turn on and off. So sometimes if that the outlet side on it plugs up or something, or something goes wrong with it, it'll it'll just tell the air compressor not to turn on. Basically, it'll just keep it shut off. So that's an easy fix. That's two airlines. You got a signal line and a and a shutoff line. And usually there's two screws that hold it on. Um, a lot of times they're Allen heads. This one actually has bolts on it because it's the older older version. But that air governor's I don't know twenty bucks at uh, at a truck you know a, a parts store or whatever. It takes 15, 20 minutes to change out. That's always a good shot too to try that. And you know it should be they usually come pre-adjusted now and they're about 125 psi shut off on them. Um, so those are the, those are some of the easy fixes for you guys out on the road. If you come across a truck that you know you're not building any air pressure and you're stuck, um, the air dryer is another problem. I don't know where it is on this truck. I haven't worked on this truck in a long time. Um, let's see. Sometimes they're back here on the frame. I don't see it there. Or maybe it's just on the other side of the truck. Let me look over there. Okay. I don't know where the hell the air dryer is. But anyways, what I was going to say is that the air dryers got a purge vent on the bottom of them. And those like to stick sometimes too. Uh, either they get froze up or um, they get contamination in them. Shit builds up inside of them. Um, oh, there it is. It's way underneath. You can see the, can the desiccant bead canister. It's way up there. But anyways, right on the bottom where it purges... Uh, if you don't have any air pressure, or it's not building any air pressure, and you put your hand under, under right underneath it, and you can feel air coming out of there, that means your purge valve is stuck open. Now, um, you might hear a t -t 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 sound. That could be it. That could also that that could be a sound coming from the purge valve, or it could just could be stuck wide open. And again, to fix that. Um, if you're in an emergency situation, you kind of just tap on it with a hammer and hope that whatever's keeping it stuck open might come on, might come on stuck, and and you might be able to get down the road with it. Um, but that's another issue that that comes up sometimes. And that's about it. That's all I can think of off the top of my head right now. Um, I haven't gotten any road calls lately or any any calls lately for not building air so i can't really think anything else off the top of my head but if you guys have any questions or comments please hit the like button hit the subscribe button and and send me a message and i'll be happy to answer any questions thanks have a great day